The ocean is a defining characteristic of our Earth, covering more than 70% of its surface. The ocean is one of Earth's most valuable natural resources. It provides food in the form of fish and shellfish. It's used for transportation, both travel and shipping. It provides a treasured source of recreational enjoyment. It is mined for minerals and drilled for crude oil. The ocean is an increasingly important source of biomedical organisms with disease-fighting potential. The ocean also plays a critical role in removing carbon from the atmosphere and providing oxygen. It regulates Earth's climate. Since the beginning of the industrial era, emissions of carbon dioxide have climbed. The oceans are the largest active sinks of carbon on Earth and have taken up an estimated 30% of anthropogenic or human-caused carbon emissions produced. This carbon dioxide, or CO2, converts into carbonic acid. As a result of these chemical reactions, surface ocean acidity has increased by 30%. This is bigger than any change in ocean chemistry seen on Earth in more than 25 million years. By the end of the century, our oceans could be nearly 150% more acidic. This acidity also means that marine calcifiers, animals with shells or skeletons made from calcium carbonate, have to work harder to produce these shells. As a result, they have less energy left to find food, to reproduce, or to defend against disease or predators. Some species will be able to meet these energetic demands, but some won't. As the oceans become more acidic, we'll see changes in ocean community structure and overall ecosystem function. Ocean acidification will affect animals at all depths, but some ecosystems might be more sensitive than others, such as the deep seas. The deep seas make up about 90% of our Earth's habitable space, but are relatively unexplored. Deep sea ecosystems are very different from those of more shallow coastal waters. Shallow coastal habitats can experience dramatic changes in their environment on a seasonal and even a daily basis. In contrast, conditions in the deep sea are cold and dark and relatively constant, with little food available. Oxygen availability also declines with depth. This is particularly striking in the eastern Pacific at a depth range of 500 to 1,000 meters, known as the oxygen minimum zone. As a result of all of these challenges, the animals that live in deep sea ecosystems are generally ill-equipped to respond to environmental changes. For this reason, many researchers think that deep sea animals may be more severely impacted by ocean acidification than their shallow water relatives. The deep sea fragile pink urchin, Strongylus introdus fragilis, is one of the most prevalent inhabitants of the seafloor in the oxygen minimum zone. Energy is limited here, so any detritus, like this decaying kelp landing here from above, is quickly found and consumed so that these animals can carry out their basic metabolic functions, respiration, growth and shell maintenance, and reproduction. At the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, we're able to study these animals in their deep sea environment using a remotely operated vehicle and a piece of equipment designed and fabricated in-house called the benthic respirometer system. This system is deployed by crane from our research vessel. Using a tracking system, we're able to locate it on the seafloor. The system contains eight chambers that we load up with animals. These chambers are fitted with a number of pumps and instruments that allow us to measure the animal's oxygen consumption during either normal control conditions or during exposure to an environmental stressor like high CO2 seawater. Using a suction sampler attached to our vehicle, an urchin is gently picked up and placed in the chamber. Once all experimental chambers have been filled, the vehicle retreats and leaves the system on the seafloor for one to two weeks while oxygen consumption data are recorded. Urchins are one deep sea animal that can be successfully kept alive at the surface. So back in the lab, we're able to study these urchins' physiology in more detail. Using a gas-controlled, temperature-controlled aquarium system, we can expose animals in the lab to seawater resembling current and future CO2 levels. We then look at how these conditions affect urchin metabolism, behavior, feeding, test structure, and blood chemistry. Most invertebrate animals, like urchins, have very little ability to regulate their internal fluids, due in part to their very low metabolic rates. Fish, for example, have much more complex regulatory mechanisms, higher metabolic rates, and greater control over the composition of their internal fluids. However, deep sea fish live in a cold, dark environment with little food available. Deep sea fish have metabolic rates on the order of 10 times lower than related shallow water fish. This means less energy available for dealing with environmental stress. At Ambari, we are studying the effects of ocean acidification on deep sea animals to better understand how deep sea ecosystems will respond to impending changes in ocean chemistry. Since ecosystems represent an intricate network among organisms and their interactions with the environment, 
a disturbance to one part can have cascading effects throughout the system. As a society, we need to know how environmental changes like ocean acidification will affect the distribution and abundance of life in the ocean. Not only the deep seas will be affected, shallow coastal habitats will also be affected, along with the ecological services that we depend upon. This is Josie Taylor at the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute.